So if you haven't already, um, go see part one. If you don't see it, then you'd probably want to understand this. So yeah. Also, while I continue reading, um, um, into the, into the story, um, it kind of gets a bit weirder, and the storytelling just gets like a bit more. I don't know what I was doing when I was writing this. Um, I, I, my brain was just like small. Okay, it just kind of gets crappy. So just be aware of that. Now I am going to start reading the story before this intro gets like two minutes long. Henry seemed impatient. When was William coming back with Will? The grand show was starting in five minutes. Finally, Will and William showed up. William was wearing his usual purple outfit while Will had a baby blue tuxedo on. You're here, Henry cheered, while walking up to Will and giving him a hug. No hug for me, William sarcastically whined. You don't deserve a hug, Henry stated. I actually seemed to hit William pretty hard. Okay, I'm sorry. As Henry apologized while hugging William. Henry faced Will and said, We're honored to have you here, Mr. Wood, but would you mind getting on stage? The birthday girl is a huge fan of yours. All right, time to swear in, some in front of children, Will responded while getting on stage. He could hear Henry silently say, Wait, what? But he reached the stage where the animatronic band was. There was a plain looking rabbit with its hideous red eyes with no eyebrows, a bow tie, weird red guitar, and strange gaze. Then there was a fat chicken with a bib saying, Let's eat, holding a very scary looking cupcake. And then there was the bear. The bear was a bear. Nothing else should be said about the bear. The curtains opened, revealing Will to the audience. He wasn't nervous. In fact, he was standing right in front of the bear. The bear began to speak. Hello, kids. Today, we have a special guest who will be performing. The bear was cut off by a loud instrumental. Will immediately recognized the instrumental. It was one of his songs, Dr. Sh Sunshine is Dead, one of Will's favorite to perform. He immediately began singing along. So did the audience of young children. <laughs> Oh boy, what a show, William clapped while Will got off stage. William enjoyed any type of songs that weren't made for children, unlike Henry, who enjoyed songs like Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. He played it all night on Saturdays and all day. I've never heard your movie music before, but now I'll make sure to listen to it while trying to take my kids back from my ex-wife, William cheered. So don't mind this. That's um lovely, Will replied. I let my 16-year-old son go to his bars, William announced. He drinks. Both Will and Henry stared at him. I'm sorry. This is why I keep my daughter away from you, Henry stated while staring at William in shock. I know, William replied, knowing, like looking down at the floor knowing he was being disapproved of. Henry looked around, trying to change the topic, so his eyes landed on Will. So, um, Mr. Wood, can, you can have some food if you'd like, he said, successfully changing the topic. Oh, yes, thank you, Henry. That show, me got all ti that show got me all tired. I think the parents were giving me dirty looks. I don't blame them, Will said, taking Henry's offer. Great, we'll tell our chef to make you something. What would you like, Henry cheered. How about steak and wine, Will asked. Ah, fellow wine lover, I see. Will Wood, you are a man of culture, William stated. I'm not cultured, Will responded. A man of pride? Sure, we'll go with that. Henry came back with Will's food and said, The meat here isn't very good, but the wine is great because William keeps buying it from around the world and hides it in the pizza. I mean, I mean hides it around the pizzeria. God dang it! Why am I so bad at reading? Um. Okay. Anyways, I found where he keeps it all. So now I know why my wine keeps disappearing. William announced, looking at Henry. Henry glanced at William and set the food down on Will's table. Oh well, I guess you weren't lying when you said that the meat wasn't the best. Will said, poking the steak with a fork. Eating the meat is optional, Henry replied. Will looked up at Henry, then he looked up at William, and looked down 
at his own plate with the ramen on it. It's fine, I can eat it, Will assured, knowing it would be rude to not eat the food. Okay, but if you get sick, blame yourself. We don't make steak. We only make pizzas, William responded. I won't get sick, Will said, cutting a small piece of meat off the but off of the butter knife. He grabbed his fork and stabbed the small piece of meat, and then brought it up to his mouth, realizing that Henry and William were both still watching him. Go on, eat the meat, Will, William chanted. William, you're scaring him, Henry whispered. The three men kept staring at each other. I think he wants us to leave, William, Henry said. Fine, let's go, William groaned. Both Henry and William left the room, leaving Will by himself. Finally, Will put the piece of meat in his mouth. That's all you go you'll get for today. But um yeah, maybe come back next week to like read more or hear more, I don't know. But obviously what the story is hinting at is like, you know, the bee is some sort of evil thing and you can, yeah, that all that stuff because they're like the story is paying so much attention to it, so um yeah. And also, you kind of know why the, like, and how the story gets so crappy, so, yeah. Okay, bye.